everybody, my name is Alex with Hake Hardware, and in this video we are going to deploy a Portainer server, and then also we're going to add a host as an agent to a Portainer server. So here's a really, really simplified diagram of how Portainer basically can be set up. If you just have one host, you can just run the server and you can manage your Docker containers through that server. But if you have multiple hosts that are all running Docker and you want to just manage everything, so host A, B, and C through the Portainer server, you can connect these two as agents. And that way you don't have to run three different servers and then you're still like switching between like different servers to manage your hosts. You can just do it all from one place. And they typically, uh, so what you're going to be doing is installing what's called a Portainer agent. And then you're going to be adding them on the server as environments. So this will become a little bit more clear once we get further into the tutorial here. So what's cool about Docker and Portainer is that Portainer is just a Docker container. So to deploy it, it's actually really easy. We'll jump over to my terminal here. And we already have Docker installed. So if I do sudo docker ps. We can see that we do have uh, no containers running, but we do have Docker installed. And the first thing we're going to want to do is create a portainer data volume. So we can just do uh, some of these commands. I'm just going to copy paste. I'm just following the wiki that I have created, which is going to be linked in the description. So I'll just do sudo docker volume create portainer data. And if I do sudo docker volume ls we can see we now have the portainer data volume and then the next is a big long uh, docker command so we have sudo docker run dash d dash p some ports dash p some more ports name portainer and restart always so when you restart your computer it's just going to start the container and then some volumes here that are going to be attached and then we're running portainer Community Edition 2.21.4. Make sure you go to the Portainer site and look and see which version is the latest. And that's going to be the version that you want to install. Uh, you can typically go to like Portainer uh, Ubuntu install. Uh, that's actually not what I want. There we go. And you should be able to see the latest. So 2.21.4 is going to be the latest. Uh, actually, I wasn't sharing my browser. Here we go. I went to the uh, docs.portainer.io and I went to the per install portainer CE and then install portainer CE with Docker on Linux. And then you can just get the latest version here. And honestly, the, the commands that we're doing are almost the same as what you're going to find here. So as you saw, we just did the create uh, portainer data, and then this is the long Docker container command that we're going to run. So it's always good to be able to reference the official documentation as well. But let's jump over to the terminal again, and we're just going to run this command. It's going to say unable to find the uh, image locally, so it needs to download the image. It'll download the image and then deploy the Docker container, and then we can do sudo docker ps and we can see that portainer is now running and it's going to be accessible on port 9443 so if you're like in ubuntu desktop and you've just installed portainer you can just go into your browser put in localhost colon 9443 and you'll be able to connect to portainer and get it set up now for me i ssh into this host this host is bob and in order to access it in the browser on the computer where I'm creating the video, because it's a different host, I need to put in the internal IP address of Bob. So I can find that out by going host name dash I. And there's two IP addresses here. This one is an internal IP for Docker. And then this one is my actual internal IP address assigned to me or well statically assigned by my router. So Let's go back and get into the browser. And we're just going to do https colon slash slash. I'm going to paste in 
that IP address, 9443. And what we're going to get is this potential security risk. Now, this is hosted on our local network. It's basically going to say that we signed our own certificate, so it can't really be trusted. We'll click Advanced, and then we'll Accept and Continue. And we're going to be brought up with a screen here where we have admin user, and then we're going to create a password. So I'm just going to use a random one that my browser creates, and then I will click create user. And you can uncheck this if you don't want to have anonymous statistics collected and sent to Portainer. I'm just going to leave it, and then you click create user. Now, once you are into your Portainer instance, there's a few things you can do. So just click get started and you're going to see you have an environments section here and there's a local environment. And it says none for environments selected, but if you click it, you can see we're inside our local environment. Now I like to rename this to whatever the host name is. So I'm just gonna go into user related, or sorry, environment related, click on the local environment, and rename this to Bob. So now when I'm at the home, I can see that this is Bob. I can see all the different uh, pieces of information for Bob, 32 CPUs, 67 gigabytes of RAM. I have one container running, and that's actually going to be Portainer. So we can see Portainer is running. And I can see you know different things about it. And now I can basically manage my entire Docker setup. So if I have lots of containers, I can manage all that through Portainer, which is really nice. But the best part is you can add other environments. So let's say you have other hosts and you want to add those hosts. You can do that through Portainer by running a Portainer server and then connecting Portainer agents. So we're going to do that next. And I'm actually going to connect Bob to another Portainer server that I have running, just my normal Portainer server. And I think I'm gonna have to remove Bob, but let's let's jump into that Portainer. Yes, I already have Bob, he's down because I uh, removed the agent, but we can go into environmental related, select Bob, and we will just, sorry, Bob, I'm gonna delete you out of here. And now we can come back here and let's go back to the terminal. I'm actually going to do sudo docker stop. And I'm going to stop the Portainer server. sudo docker remove. I'm going to remove that container. And I don't actually need the, the volume anymore either. So I could do sudo docker volume remove Portainer data. And now that volume is gone because we don't need any of this for just running a Portainer agent. And then we're going to go back to the browser, make this a little bit bigger. And we're going to go into environments again, and we're going to click this add environment button. And then we're going to click Docker standalone and then start wizard. And this is going to give us a command that we can run a Docker command. And we'll just click that copy button and we'll move back into Termius. And what we're going to be doing is deploying the Docker portainer agent container. So I'll do sudo because they don't include that, but I need it. And then I'll paste in that command. And I see that it's doing 21.2, and that's because the current server that I have installed is 21.2. So we're just gonna leave it at 21.2 and hit enter. Okay, and now that Docker container is running, so our server can make a connection to our agent. So we're gonna jump back to the browser. And then we're going to put in the name, so Bob. And then we need to put in the environmental address. So if you remember, it was 192.168.69.99, I think. And uh, let me just double check real quick. Yes. All right, cool. And then we do 9001. So that's the port that the Portainer agent is on. And we'll just click Connect. And you can see. Environmental Bob created. So if I go to home and I should now see Bob all the way down here. So Bob is now connected as a 
agent as an environment inside my Portainer server that's hosted on Flexo up here. So let me just go back and make sure I didn't forget anything. Connecting to an environment. There we go, connecting. Yeah, that's it. So hopefully that helped you. If it did, feel free to leave a like and I'll see you in the next video.